Bob, thank you very much. And as you mentioned, this is a sonic blockbuster here on ESPN. And what a big time matchup in a big time environment we've got for you tonight with number five, Kentucky, hosting number one, Tennessee, a school that has won 19 in a row. They are talented, they are experienced, they are confident. And they're here with a big blue nation looking to pull off a win on the road tonight. They're a game up on LSU for top spot of the SEC. Kentucky two games back of Tennessee. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Lexington. Dan Schulman, Jay Bill, is so many fascinating aspects and matchups in this game. Let's start with the fact that one of these teams is a whole lot more experienced, Jay Bill, than the other. Well, Tennessee is the number one team in the country in large measure because they do have talent, but they are an older team. They're made up of juniors and seniors that have been through it together. That means they're like an old school team that was constructed like in the 80s or 90s when guys stuck around. Kentucky more the new school team where they're freshmen and sophomores. They rely upon their younger players. Will experience dominate or will talent playing at home dominate? That's really the issue in this game. And if we look at one specific matchup in this game, it's hard to not look at Grant Williams on one side, T.J. Washington on the other. That's the marquee matchup. Grant Williams, the reigning SEC player of the year from Tennessee. He's a junior, averages about 19 points per game. He's fantastic in the middle of the floor, commands a double team and excellent passing out of that double team and P.J. Washington for Kentucky is having a terrific season especially over the last seven games he's averaging 21 points almost nine rebounds per game over that seven game stretch including shooting over 50 percent from the field and 50 percent from three 11 of his last 22. You don't want to be a big guy who's accused of ignoring guards, though. So let's talk about the point guard matchup as well. Well, I think it's going to be an excellent matchup. Jordan Bone, I think, is the best point guard in the Southeastern Conference. He's got a very low error rate. His assist turnover rate is over 3 to 1, and he is leading the SEC in assists over 6.5 per game. He's accounting for it with assists in his scoring, about 30 33% of the, the volunteers scoring. And Ashton Hagens, who has not played well his last few games, he has struggled a bit, but he's so such a great defender. He's going to have to get up and into Jordan Bone and try to make him turn his back, make it difficult for Tennessee to advance the ball up the floor because Tennessee wants to get out in transition so they can get the ball to Grant Williams early before he can be double teamed. Just moments away from Tip Maria Taylor is with the head coach of the balls. Rick Ball. All right, Coach, you got to win in this arena before. What is required of your team to have success against Kentucky tonight? Just play good basketball, transition defense, rebound the ball, and take care of the ball. All right, thanks. And Rick Barnes, well, he's got to barge his way back into his own huddle after that interview with Maria. The balls are ready to go. The cats are ready to go. Let's take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster in anticipation of this matchup between Tennessee and Kentucky. Their first of two regular season meetings. The Vols are on the longest winning streak in school history. Their only loss came to Kansas in November in overtime on a neutral court. Kentucky 11-3 all-time at home in top five matchups. This is the 11th time there's been an SEC matchup with both programs ranked in the top five. Kentucky's been in all 11 of them over the years. As Jay mentioned, a very experienced group, juniors and seniors for Tennessee, not a group that is going to be intimidated in any way, shape, or form by anything that they see. As mentioned, their only loss was to Kansas. This is the third time in Tennessee program history that they've been in a top five matchup, both programs in the top five. Remember, they beat Memphis back in 2008. Coach Cal was the coach of Memphis back then. Kentucky's got more history against a number one opponent, seven and 15 all time. There's a whole lot of noisy blue, but you know what? There's a bit more orange than I thought there would be in this building here tonight. Not in that section. The Vols have traveled. It's been 85 days since Tennessee has lost a game. And they are ready to play. We are ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. And the tip is controlled by the Cats. Tennessee playing man-to-man. -man. And Grant Williams starting off on P.J. Washington. They're going to try to get Grant Williams in foul trouble early. And it's Washington who is called for the foul. Really nice job. They 
isolated P.J. Washington at the free throw line. He drove right, and Grant Williams just moved his feet, stayed right in front. That was an excellent call. He had legal guarding position. He could move to maintain it. That's a goal of 15 seconds for Big Blue Nation to be upset with the officials, but I agree with you 100%. He did a great job defending on that play. Let's see if Tennessee... With Williams being covered by Travis. Washington is on Alexander. Williams turns it over. The matchup between Bone and Hagens is a huge one for this game. Hagens fends off the defender but couldn't finish the layup. Admiral Schofield got knocked down a little bit slow getting up. Bone. And lofts it up and in as Tennessee strikes first. Now that didn't seem like a fast break but it was transition, a quick outlet pass. And Jordan Bone, one of the speedier guards in the country, but he's changing speeds in the last couple years. He's done a great job of using his speed when it's necessary and then changing speeds to really keep defenders off balance. And what really what Tennessee does is they'll get three guys along the baseline and they'll flatten out a, a transition defense. Then Bone just picks his spots. He'd like use Kyle Alexander there as a little brush screen got past him. And, very casually made that easy bucket. We mentioned Admiral Schofield got knocked down. He is going to the bench right now as Jordan Bowden comes in to take his place and Schofield getting a little bit of attention. If we get some kind of report, we'll let you know as soon as we can about what the status of Schofield is. He has not gone all the way back to the locker room, standing near the corner of the court. The three for Washington who is shooting the ball very well from beyond the arc. He's at 43% on the season. And really, especially over the last seven games, shooting over 50% from three-point range, he did not hesitate. We well, talk about a guy who made a good decision to come back for his sophomore year. He has really taken his game up a notch. Tyler Hero guarding Lamonte Turner. That's another important matchup. Hero much bigger. Kyle Alexander, the senior, and Washington got a piece of that. Not the best shot for Tennessee. Just because you catch the ball doesn't mean you can shoot it. Here over the crossover. Hagen's not as much of an offensive threat, perhaps as quickly his backup, but a superior defensive player. Washington feeling it. Not this time on the three. Good block out by Grant Williams. And Williams is fronting when he's guarding Reed Travis. Bone again, lost it on the way up. Deflected, though, and it stays with Tennessee and let's see if we can get a look at what happened to Admiral Schofield a couple of trips back. Ooh, they ran just into ran into his own guy, yeah. ran into Alexander. Inbounded to Lamonte Turner who hit a huge shot in this building last year in what was ultimately a two-point win for the Vols. Bone got his man in the air off the back of the iron. I think Jordan Bone is the best point guard in the Southeastern Conference. He's having a spectacular season. And he's a Cousy Award finalist, one of the 10 finalists for the best point guard in the nation. And Tennessee really pressuring and trying to push Kentucky a little bit further out on the floor. Washington over Alexander, but a good start for P.J. Washington. And single coverage in the post. Tennessee not coming with the double. And one-on-one -on -one in the post, the hardest thing in basketball to guard. P.J. Washington showing he can go inside and out. Makes him a really difficult matchup. Shot clock running down on Tennessee, down to seven. Step back by Turner. Not there, and Travis down with a rebound for the Cats. Really good defense by Tyler Hero. Keldon Johnson gets his first touch of the night. He's got Bowden on him. And now Hagen's up top as John Calipari calls out a play. Well, that was a nice job by Tennessee to get back in transition. Hero trying to penetrate, kick to the corner. Washington with a drive and a foul called on Alexander. P.J. Washington getting the ball in the low post. He looks in the middle to see if a double's coming and just paused for poise in the post and then went right in for that little jump hook over the outstretched arms of the defender. That was just excellent 
post play by P.J. Washington. I like that. Alliteration. I think you should patent paused for poise. Paused for poise yeah. in the post. A lot of alliteration <laughs> from anxious analysts. <laughs> P.J. Washington, as Jay mentioned, hot lately. 20 or more points in six of his last seven games and a good sign for Tennessee as Admiral Schofield is back in the game. You know, Jordan Bowden is really the best shooter, I believe, on this Tennessee roster, but you'd have a hard time arguing that he's been shooting it better than Admiral Schofield this year. He's got a little bit better of a percentage. 50-50 ball goes to Kentucky. Travis barreling his way into the paint, lost it, and it belongs to Tennessee. Well, Tennessee needs to get the ball to Grant Williams. He's a very good passer. Get him the ball in the elbow. He's being guarded by Travis. Here comes Schofield off the screen. Elevates and knocks it down. And when Grant Williams is used as a screener, he draws a lot of attention. And Admiral Schofield can rise up so quickly. Shoots in the mid-range, shoots from three-point range. 6'6 six, six and 240 pounds, too, for Schofield. This is not a, a long and tall front court for Tennessee, but they are wide and they are really good players. Washington again. He's got all seven for the Cats. Not sure there's a more confident player in the SEC right now than P.J. Washington. And a sloppy possession right now for Tennessee, but it'll be out of bounds to the Vols when we come back and when we come back a little bit more inside the tennessee program we'll take a look at how grant williams and admiral schofield changed their bodies over the last three years espn's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by h and r block in person or online block has your back and in part by cadillac Prime Time presented by H&R Block. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Coach, a little bit about Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, how they have transformed themselves in the last few years. Maria Taylor has more. Well, Dan, they've really worked very hard on their fitness to change their body so that they can be elite players on the floor. For Grant Williams, he showed up at about 265. He said he was a roly-poly. That's how he described himself. He had about 18% body fat. And since then, he's gotten down to 10% body fat. He's lost close to 30 pounds. And he says his movement is much better. The same thing goes for Admiral Schofield, who showed up. He was about 63 pounds. He's lost about 20. He was 15% body fat. And look at the change there. Now he's at 6% body fat. And the goal weight for them was about 10% body fat because that's what NBA locker rooms are looking for. So they were doing three a days, four a days with their strength and conditioning coach Garrett Medwood until they got their body into the shape that they wanted to be in. And now they still hold each other accountable, sending one another pictures of their actual meals so their fitness can improve. Hi, Marie. Thank you. Great story. A, a story uh, from Rick Barnes when Williams was a freshman. His mom sent him like 50 bags of buttered popcorn. Barnes intercepted the package, knew what it was, wouldn't let Williams have any of it, put Williams on the treadmill, and then walked up behind him eating the popcorn while the poor kid was on the <laughs> treadmill. Nice guy, that Coach Barnes. Gets his point across. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could tell when Williams got the ball back in the post when he drew all that attention he passed out of the post to Lamonte Turner got a wide open three just didn't knock it down but anytime he gets double coverage he can pass over people he's an excellent passer especially from the high post Emmanuel quickly EJ Montgomery in off the bench for Kentucky John Fulkerson has come in now for Tennessee both teams about eight deep Eldon Johnson baseline floater wow tough shot Kentucky running that set where they run a cutter off the elbows and then they'll get a little pin down screen on the other side they ran that almost exclusively against lsu williams knocks down a three that is his 10th made three on the season reed travis just not used to guarding a big guy out there as a trailer he usually waits for him to get to the free throw line meets him there he's gonna have to pick him up a little higher montgomery giving kentucky some good minutes lately a lot of Rebounding when he's in the game quickly turn, turns it over on a travel 
Grant Williams coming down the floor as a trailer. And Reed Travis, that's his assignment, but he's in the lane waiting for him to come down and come into the low post or get near the elbow of the free throw line where he likes to operate. And instead, he just pulls the trigger on an easy step in three. Williams gets a breather. Jordan Bone has come back into the game. One thing you know about this Tennessee team, Dan, even in a, a difficult atmosphere here at Rupp Arena, this team is not going to panic. No. You know, they've been here before. Is there a is there a high major team that combines the mental toughness and the physical toughness to the degree that Tennessee does? That's a good question. I don't I don't know that I've thought about it that way. I don't know. And nothing comes to mind. Yeah. I mean, these guys are all juniors and seniors that yeah. have been there before. And as we saw, they've been in the weight room as well. Johnson with a runner, no. Fulkerson keeps it alive. Nick Richards down with a rebound. Boy, and Johnson we... went down yeah. hard. And Ron Gruber blows the whistle to give Johnson a chance to get up. And good to see him get up so quickly after he hit the deck so hard. Ooh. Not sure where they got hit by his own guy, but went up and stretched out, got knocked off balance. Mm. Well, Johnson had got off to such a great start, but the last four games, he's averaging about 12 points a game, but only 15 of 42 from the field. Not as efficient as he has been. Everybody getting a touch on this possession for the Wildcats. Still lots of time. A little continuity, ball screen slip action, then a ball screen here. Lob for Richards, and Schofield broke it up only to see Montgomery finish it. Well, it was well read by Admiral Schofield. He broke up the play, but nobody else from Tennessee converged on the ball. This is a small Tennessee lineup right now with Bone, Bowden, and Turner all in the game. Bowden misses the three. Great rebound by Hero. Boy, this is a physical game already. Cutters being bumped. That little stagger away. Tyler Hero just blew it up physically. Richards. And he draws the foul. Kentucky is getting the ball inside. And attacking the paint. Tennessee a couple times has settled for jump shots. But they've got to figure out a way to get to the rim. Because right now, it's been all Kentucky in the paint. Kentucky lost that game controversial fashion. Remember, the, the tip-in that was allowed was not ruled a basket interference. The game against LSU on Tuesday. Kentucky has not lost two home games in a row in the John Calipari era. Here is the play, Jay, that was the talk of college basketball Tuesday night. Yeah, clearly... That was basket interference and should have been waved off. The referees just missed it. And there's a lot of talk right now, should that be reviewable? It is not reviewable. What was reviewable was what was the basket in time before the, the clock went 0, 0, 0. And it's just one of those quirks in the rules. Richards at the line. John Calipari not shy in saying more than once that if Kentucky's going to be the team it wants to be, Nick Richards has to, has to reach his potential, has to get closer to that potential as he gets a break now. Reed Travis back in. We've seen some games where Richards is a huge force, especially at the defensive end. Then he only played three minutes in the game against LSU. Well, he's an excellent shot blocker, rim protector that can change the game defensively. But the last four games, he's had seven points, five rebounds, and one block total in the last four games. Jamal Baker in for the first time for Kentucky, guarding Turner. Schofield misses the three. Alexander with a putback for Tennessee. Grant Williams kept that ball alive, and Admiral Schofield set a little back screen. Then he was open for that shot. Tennessee does such a good job on the offensive glass of just keeping the ball alive. If they can't get the rebound, they will tip it to keep it alive. Travis got knocked down. Play continues. Shot clock inside 10. Johnson open on the wing. Count it. That was set up by the penetration of Ashton Hagens. Got a piece of the paint and then kicked it out. 
What a drive by Jordan Bone. There's some of that elite speed that Rick Barnes compares to TJ Ford, the great guard that he had down in Austin. Well, I think Jordan Bone needs to put more pressure on this Kentucky defense and what really a drive it. What a pass from Hagens to Johnson. And it's all because of the penetration. Ashton Hagens is putting the ball on the deck and putting Tennessee in rotation. Williams one-on-one, -on -one, no double team yet. Now it comes, and it's a turnover. Johnson again, and way too strong. Tennessee ball. That's good. Bone rises up for the mid-range jumper, and it brings the balls back within four. Well, he is such a good player. Solid defensively, a low error rate. And he has been outstanding all year long. Three to one assist to turnover ratio for Jordan Bone, averaging close to seven assists per game to lead the conference. Johnson in the corner this time. Got another one. Well, his mini slump is over. Boy, when you have Keldon Johnson and P.J. Washington playing well, now all of a sudden Kentucky is the force we expected them to be. Schofield from the free throw line will, at least for the moment, quiet the crowd. Well, when Tennessee screens like that and gets a piece of Schofield's defender, well, he's going to be able to rise up and knock down that mid-range shot. He's really worked on that stroke where it's become really reliable. The next step for him, he's got to get to the free throw line more. Grant Williams just got laid out by a P.J. Washington screen. Williams very slow to get up. Now back in the play. Johnson, one more time. Absolute bedlam right now at Rupp Arena with Kentucky out to an eight-point lead on the number one team in the nation. This is the way Kentucky is capable of playing. They are playing a lot of people and everyone playing at a high level, but especially P.J. Washington and Keldon Johnson. Johnson secures the rebound and finds Hagens. Baker's open. But Kentucky has been so much more physical than a physical Tennessee squad. They are just knocking bodies all over the place on their defensive end. Jay, I think we've gone about five minutes of game time without a whistle here. And it hasn't been for lack of contact. Oh, yeah. Ask Grant Williams about that. Driving, kicks to Schofield, wide open for three. Just have to knock down those open shots. Those are open shots. Turner had one. Schofield's had a couple. Kentucky is making their open shots, and Tennessee right now is not. That has been the difference. Keldon Johnson has scored the last 11 points for the Wildcats. Well, good job by Grant Williams to stay in front of P.J. Washington. Travis trying to slip by Alexander. Well, Williams has been working his tail off on both ends. Looks a little bit winded right now. Because there is a ton of body contact out there. I don't think we could blame any of the 10 guys for being winded the way this one is going. Tough shot by Schofield. And now Williams down hard on the court again and slow to get up one more time. What a frenetic pace. There have been five guys sitting at the scorer's table forever trying to get into this game. Is this How many knockdowns do you need before you get a standing eight count? Jordan Bones has been yelling at his teammates every time they get the ball. Let's go. Get running. He wants them to play faster. Well, they need to play ahead of this Kentucky defense because five on five, this has been a fist fight. Bone the kick. Williams the three. Big shot for the balls. All by the penetration of Jordan Bone. Penetrated down to the baseline and then passed back out. You know, it's not like Tennessee hasn't been getting some open shots. They're getting them. 
And a foul on Levante Turner to take us to a timeout. 23-18, Kentucky J with Keldon Johnson knocking him down from everywhere. Well, Keldon Johnson has scored 13 points in this ball game, knocking down every open opportunity. Kentucky off to a great start. Keldon Johnson, the freshman from Kentucky, is having a great game. Five of nine from the field, 13 points. He has one steal. Every open opportunity, it seems like he has knocked it down. Three of five from three-point range. Kentucky overall, four of nine to stake themselves out to this five-point. It seems like an early lead, but it's kind of a late first half lead. <laughs> The last whistle was somewhere near the 13-minute mark, and here come some reinforcements on both sides. You know, another guy who's having a great game so far is Ashton Hagens. What a quarterback he's been. Four assists, no turnovers so far. He is on. No, he stays in there as quickly comes in as well. So a two-point guard look right now for Kentucky. Maria Taylor with a report from the Tennessee Huddle. Well, Rick Barnes basically looked down at the box score and said, hey, two guys have scored. All we have to do is do a better job defending on P.J. Washington and Keldon Johnson. And he also said, right now we're settling for jump shots. Do a better job putting the ball on the deck and trying to make something happen. Grant Williams the foul. Thank you, Maria. And right back to another media timeout. 6.15 to go. Kentucky leading Tennessee by five. When do we come back? Jay Billis, P.J. Washington to go at 94 feet. By popular demand. 94 feet with P.J. Washington, brought to you by Smile Direct Club. What is your favorite thing to eat? Favorite thing to eat is chicken wings. Favorite breakfast cereal when you were a kid? I used to like honey smacks. Favorite destination for a vacation? I love going to Hawaii. Game of horse, roster wide for Kentucky, who wins? Tyler Hero. Last shot, you guys are tied to win the national championship. Who do you want taking the shot? I'm taking the shot. What if it's a three? Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the biggest difference between P.J. Washington last year and P.J. Washington this year? My confidence. And where'd the confidence come from? Like, how did your confidence change? Uh, just working in the gym and getting better. Getting better, 94 feet. And we did it here. <laughs> oh, Jay. <laughs> what a great kid. Yeah. Succinct answers, too. Yeah, you had to go deep into your bag of questions there. Uh, the first player since the Twins, the Harrisons, a few years ago to score 10 points per game and then come back for his next season. And as we mentioned earlier, a great decision for him and obviously a huge boost for the Kentucky program that he returned for his sophomore year. Eve Pons guarding Tyler Hero, who is running off those low post screens. Richard spinning and finishing. Big time move down on the block. Hasn't had success over the last four games, but Rick, Nick Richards looking very confident. And right now, throughout the game, Kentucky has been getting a piece of the paint. That's what's opened things up for their open shots. They're getting into the paint first. Eve Pond's baseline, you see him playing with a mask, suffered a facial fracture in practice, had to have surgery, missed one game, played sparingly during the Vols game this week, but an important guy off the bench. But this could have been a very serious, a fracture kind of near his cheekbone, where the cheekbone moves up towards the temple, uh, required some surgery, and a tough kid to be back in there just a few days later. Right now for Tennessee, not really a lineup where they're going to be throwing the ball inside. Grant Williams on the bench. And so they're, they're going to need to find open opportunities. Wide open, Ponds. And he knocks down a corner three. Just a little screen for the screener action on the wide box set. And E. Pons was so open that he actually hesitated before he took that lefty jumper. Tennessee, one of the best offensive teams in the country, as Hero responds with a baseline jumper. Tennessee, top 10 in the country in scoring, number one in assists per game, number two in the nation in field goal percentage. Tyler Hero is moving so well without the ball. If you go over the top of a screen, he is going to fade to the corner like he did just there. That was an excellent read of the defense by Tyler Hero. Bowden baseline into traffic, finds Alexander, and a couple of cats got him, and now it's Higgins in alone. There is just no getting around it. Tennessee has to be stronger because right now, Kentucky is manhandling the balls. This has, they've been out-physicaled all game long. 
which you don't say about Tennessee very often at all. And it's not that Tennessee hasn't been physical. It's just that Kentucky's been stronger. Hero runs down the loose ball. And that was not a good possession for Tennessee. One pass, shot went up, didn't make the defense move or really work. Hans chasing Hero around a couple of screens. And you've got to chase him so much, it's going to open up something for someone else, including for the screener. Who was P.J. Washington in this case. It, it's Hero missing that long jumper. But look at Richards working on the glass. Boy, John Calipari loving every minute of Nick Richards' contribution. He's got a confident big guy that is making a difference. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Get a quarter pound double cheeseburger or a Slinger Plus Tots for just $2.99. Kevin, well, we had college game day from a different location here in Lexington, Kentucky, Memorial Coliseum, and it seemed to work out for the half-court shot. McKinley Webb knocked it down, and that means 19,000 goes to him. Uh, but right now, we've got Jay Will, we've got Seth Greenberg here, we got the Jeep halftime report coming up soon. Let's talk about this game. It's an eight-point game, but it seems like a little bit of a rock fight right now. Austin Hedges is doing such a good job just controlling the tempo of the game defensively, but now also offensively getting in those gaps. He has five assists in the first half. I think Kentucky's doing a great job of getting paint touches on the dribble and on the pass, and they've been terrific defensively. They've been physical and defending without fouling. They've done a great job on Schofield and Williams. All right, these two brilliant men alongside Reese Davis are coming up with your deep halftime <laughs> report. Apparently, Joel and Artie stopping by, too, and they'll talk about R.J. Barrett's triple-double. Larry, Hi, Murray, thank you. There's the, uh, McKinley who made the shot at game day today. And if you don't believe me, watch this. Excellent form and no doubt about it. I think that was like his fifth effort. Looked like he was running out of gas a little bit and then threw that one in. That was really impressive. You know, Coach Greenberg talked about Kentucky defending without fouling. And he's exactly right. 16 minutes. They've only allowed 21 points. Jay, Kentucky's only committed one foul in this game. Remarkable. And they have been unbelievably physical as well. Two. And you know what's funny about their, their two fouls? They're both offensive, both offensive fouls. fouls. Remember, P.J. Washington of the game. got one, yeah. That's their first foul since 15 seconds into the game. And because of their physicality, they've been forcing jump shots from Tennessee, and then they are out-rebounding the balls by 10. They've dominated the glass. Good roll replace action, a great drive. Richards with a block. Well, he could really be a game-changer with the defensive end. Schofield sizing up Washington. Gets it off the glass and good. Tough runner there by Admiral Schofield. What helped there was Grant Williams posting so hard down on the low block. It looked like that Schofield might throw it into him. Instead, he drove, and he did a good job of shielding off another shot blocker. Good position for Washington. No double team, and he'll finish again. No way if he gets two feet in the paint one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to miss that. P.J. Washington has a 7-3 wingspan. That's his ninth point of the game. He had the first seven of the night for Kentucky. Then Keldon Johnson took over. Schofield for three. Weak side rebound, Williams. He'll kick it out. Tipped by Hero, gathered in by Turner. Crowd thought that Williams might have lifted up that left foot, but he didn't. Instead, a great look to bout it. Whoa, and Richards crashes into him and is called for the foul. Tennessee is getting open shots. And that was excellent ball movement. And Jordan Bowden, who's a, a fine three-point shooter, shoots over 40% from three and has been shooting very well of late. No question on that foul, but I mean, there are a lot of bells getting rung out wow. there. I mean, how many guys have been hit hard, hit the deck hard? This has been one of the most physical games that we've seen all season long. Tennessee number one, Kentucky number five. Of course, if Kentucky's trying to play their way up into a number one seed, a win tonight would be a nice step in that direction. A long way to go, though, in the season still. Kentucky is really fighting through screens. Another terrific drive by Admiral Schofield. You know, oftentimes, Admiral Schofield will be more of a shooter. Mid-range, three-point shooter. 
and he's putting the ball on the deck. He could find his way to the free throw line. He doesn't shoot a ton of free throws. With that body, he should shoot more. Good job by Williams to take away that pass and extend it. Wow. That's great wow. defense. What a play by Williams and a bucket at the other end for Turner. That's just for a ball reversal to get that pin down on the other side. And Grant Williams not only extended it, he took it away. And Tennessee, as well as Kentucky, has played in this game. Just down by four. What a fantastic defensive play by Grant Williams. And then Lamonte Turner scores on the other end. John Calipari, unhappy. Coverage tonight being brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. As Jay mentioned, only a four-point game. Tennessee, not a team built to go away. They're not going anywhere, even though it feels like Kentucky has dominated most of the first half. It's just a four-point game. Well, the one thing you know, you... We better get this ball over. And they just do. Not sure they did. It was awfully close. Washington again. Do they double him this time? Jump hook again. That has been his go-to move tonight. P.J. Washington has been active. When he gets into the post, he's gotten good position. He stayed wide. And man, has he been tough. He gets so wide, you can't get around him in order to front him. And Admiral Schofield caught behind, then one-on-one -on -one in the post, a nice little shake, and then go into that left shoulder. And he's so long, you can't get up there and block it. That's just great post play by P.J. Washington. Who is five for six from the floor, 11 points on the night. He and Keldon Johnson have combined for 24. Tip by Bone, finished by Williams. Another opportunity for Tennessee. Bone couldn't grab it, but he kept it alive. Tennessee's so good at tipping those offensive rebounds and taking advantage of it. The second guy grabs it. And for Grant Williams, Jay, that's his first two-point field goal of the night. He's previously made a couple of threes in this game. T.J. Washington's got to get the ball. Again with Schofield. Help this time from Turner. Doesn't matter. He has been fantastic in this first half. A go-to scorer for Kentucky. Bone using the screen, pulls up for the jumper and knocks it down. How easy was that? Got the screen from Grant Williams, old ball screen, and then he rolled hard to the basket and rolled his man down, and Jordan Bone just took his time and waltzed into that shot. Shot clock turned off. And away from the play, Bone called for a foul. Hey, Monday, number four, Virginia's in Blacksburg to take on number 22, Virginia Tech. It is our rivalry week, big Monday matchup, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Gary Blackshear doing a fantastic job in Virginia Tech's win today at 29 points. Well, as Jay mentioned a couple of times, an extremely physical game here tonight. If you're just joining us or if you don't believe us, there's some video evidence of some of the things that have gone on. We've had some very big, strong people get knocked down to the deck on a few occasions tonight. This has been as physical a game as we've seen all year long. Bodies have been hitting the deck. You've seen guys that got, that, that's usually called a foul. I mean, it has been physical beyond belief. Bodies flying all over the place. And yet, neither team got in the one and one. With all that contact, neither team got in the one and one. They're going to meet again in two weeks in Knoxville. Leading the nation in bruises. <laughs> Kentucky winning the rebounding battle, but Tennessee hanging right with the Wildcats on the offensive glass and with second chance points. 11 seconds, Kentucky to inbound. Hagan's crossover, driving, got it. Boy, what a move. What a move. The speed from Bone got the shot off, but couldn't hit it. And Kentucky will take a six-point lead into halftime. 
What a good first half. Number one, Tennessee. Number five, Kentucky. Try to bounce back from the loss to LSU to beat the number one team of the nation. They are up six at the break. 37-31 Wildcats. After these messages, we'll send it to the Jeep Halftime Report with Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. Welcome back to Saturday Primetime, presented by H&R Block. This is a sonic blockbuster on ESPN. And what a good first half. Keldon Johnson with some big moments. P.J. Washington was great. Grant Williams, three for three, eight points to tie for the scoring lead for Tennessee, the reigning SEC player of the year. Let's take a look at our first half stats. Brought to you by Dell. And how about Kentucky shooting 59% out rebounding Tennessee only committed three fouls in the first half and a very physical first half and they've got themselves a six point lead on the number one team of the nation. Welcome back. Rupp Arena, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis. What'd you think? Well, Kentucky set the tone defensively and you mentioned it with how physical they were, but they also got a piece of the paint. They got into the paint off the dribble and then they got the ball inside to P.J. Washington. In order to keep it out of there, they're going to have to do Tennessee a better job of getting around in front and pressuring the ball so it can't be thrown so easily in there. Uh, Tennessee has to do a much better job on their end of getting a piece of the paint and getting into the lane because they've taken a number of jump shots and some have been open. They just got to hit them. Maria Taylor with some thoughts from the Tennessee side of it. Yeah, Dan, I spoke with Rick Barnes and he said a big problem they had in the first half is they simply weren't running their offense. They were one pass and shoot. And although that might not have been a bad shot, he wants to work through the offense a little bit more. They want to get out in transition and they hope to get some more of these 50-50 balls that we're seeing with this physical game. And he also said that defensively, they just have to work harder and turn the emotions around in the second half. All right, Maria, thank you. We are ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic blockbuster. Kentucky with the opening possession and a six-point lead. How about Ashton Hagens? Five assists and no turnovers in the first half. Did a really good job defensively and put the ball in the deck, got into the lane. And they put Tennessee into rotation quite a bit. And look at that. Just so simple to get the ball inside to P.J. Washington. And he is looking like an NBA post player. He extends so high with that 7-3 wingspan, you can't block it or bother it. And it doesn't matter if it's been Williams on him or Schofield on him. He scored on both of them. Bone got caught in the air and turns it over. Higgins one-on-one, Euro step over Williams, no good. Travis with a hustle rebound. And Hero with a corner three. That was just Kentucky out hustling Tennessee on the offensive glass. Just some great hustle and determination to buy Kentucky tonight. Look at Reed Travis just outworking people for that rebound. Kicks it to the corner. And Tyler Hero knows what to do with it as he knocks it down to extend the lead to 11. A look at our fan cam from the student section here at Rupp Arena. Man, this building, Jay, has been alive tonight, hasn't it? Well, for good reason, because Kentucky has been the aggressor throughout this ballgame. And that last play made by Reed Travis... I mean, from the Tennessee perspective, Rick Barnes was looking at Kyle Alexander saying, are you going to go after the ball? I mean, the ball came right to you, and you didn't get it. And then it cost it cost Tennessee a three. Allison Venata, our thanks to her for working so hard in the student section. Showing us some great shots about how it looks and feels for Kentucky fans tonight. Ball's loose, and again it belongs to Kentucky. And numbers. Hero. Travis. He got fouled. Yeah, there it is. That was just a simple little flex cut on the Tennessee end. And then a duck in by Grant Williams. Just a poor pass by Lamonte Turner in the turnover that led to the runout. I mean, right now, you know, Tennessee is not strong with the ball. And they're being knocked back on every possession in the second half. Tennessee is down 12 right now. This matches the largest deficit the Volunteers have had. Now exceeds. This is now the largest deficit Tennessee has faced at any point in any game this year. They were down six at halftime and had to feel pretty good about being down six with the way the first half went. They were hanging in there. And then it's been doubled up on them in just three possessions. 7-0 Kentucky in the first minute 21 of the second half. 
Let's see if Tennessee runs that same screen for the screener action. Baseline jumper, Schofield, way too strong. Washington fouled by Alexander. Wednesday night, we will have college basketball's greatest rivalry. It'll be North Carolina and Duke, a part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. It's a sonic blockbuster from Cameron Indoor Stadium, 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Both teams victorious today, Duke over NC State and North Carolina over Wake Forest. Cameron Johnson had 27 points against State. And then Zion Williamson had 32 against, or that was Wake Forest, 32 against NC State, and R.J. Barrett had a triple-double. Yeah, I think 23, 12, and 11 is what we saw. Turner with a three that rattles out. And no offense run by Tennessee leads to a runout. Johnson, good defense by Schofield, but Johnson scores anyway. This is getting away from Tennessee. They have been manhandled just manhandled. Williams, the kick. Schofield for three. Well, how about that recovery by P.J. Washington to put pressure on that shot? The length to bother Schofield when he seemed like he had a wide open look. And Kentucky winning the battle of the boards as well at both ends. Backdoor cut. A challenge at the rim and a foul is called on Tennessee. It'll be on Schofield. Now, do you think that was a strong move on that cut? Who hit the deck? It wasn't P.J. Washington. I mean, watch this backdoor cut from the right corner. He goes up so strong. It's Grant Williams that hits the deck. That's a big time play by P.J. Washington. The awareness to cut to the basket and then the strength with which he has played all game long. How impressive has he been? What a night he's having now. A game high 16 points for Washington. Over the last eight games, no, but no big guy in the country has been better than P.J. Washington. Well, that Tennessee still has not been to the line tonight. Kentucky has protected its paint so well in this game. Bone tipped away by Hagens. And it's going to belong to Kentucky. That ball hit Bone before it landed out of bounds. All of the emotion, all of the strength has been on Kentucky's side in this one. And they are running away with this one against the number one team in the country. They have outscored Tennessee 10-0 in the second half. And really, Tennessee hasn't had a good look at the basket yet. Everything has been contested. Higgins with a jumper. Eighteen point lead. A challenge by Travis at the rim, and it belongs to the Cats again. Hagens to Johnson for two more. This is the team that everybody thought was number one coming into this season. We haven't seen much of this group. But this was a good time to show itself. This is what Kentucky can be the remainder of the season. Ashton Hagens in transition after the excellent defense on the other end. Reed Travis with the play defensively. And Hagens getting right into the lane, dishing it off to Keldon Johnson. And the emotion of a team that has played with tremendous strength against the number one team in the nation. 20-point lead, Kentucky, early in the second half. 
Tomorrow, it's our next UFC fight night with former heavyweight champ Cain Velasquez taking on Francis Ngannou at 9 o'clock Eastern time in the main event on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. And you can watch the prelims on ESPN Plus starting at 5.30 Eastern with the rest of the prelims on ESPN and Deportes starting at 7. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPN Plus. Com. This is something. 14 nothing Kentucky run in the first three and a half minutes of the second half. Tennessee, without question, one of the best offensive teams in the country, has yet to score here in the second half. You know, I think I think Tennessee came ready to play. They were well prepared, but Kentucky came prepared for a UFC fight. I mean, they came they came prepared to battle it out in the octagon, and they are. They have knocked Tennessee around from the opening tap. Bone pass. Williams and a foul on P.J. Washington. Grant Williams has played hard all game long and he's had some success, but he has spent more time on his back in this game than the rest of the season combined. Yeah. He's holding that left wrist right now. P.J. Washington just brought that left arm down just a bit. But other than that, that was, there wasn't much there. He's allowed to go straight up. And I thought he did for the most part. First free throw attempt of the night for Tennessee. Those are tough calls there because you're thinking about, well, wait a minute, that was offense-initiated contact. And it did... Did P.J. Washington come down a little bit from vertical? Those are tough ones. Williams knocks them both down. Remember that incredible game he had against Vandy? Scored 43 points, and it was a perfect 23 of 23 from the free throw line in that game. Tennessee bringing full court pressure. They got to do something to change the rhythm of this game because... Kentucky's established the rhythm on the defensive end. They established a defensive rhythm in this ballgame. And away from the play, a call going against Tennessee. Jordan Bone called for the foul. All Kentucky up 18 points. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Outback Steakhouse, Aussie Rules. Because it's all about play for K, and both of those games will be featured on Monday, and all of the funding goes to the Jimmy P Foundation, and both of these teams are obviously in the top 25 when you're talking about Notre Dame and NC State, and I know that you like Arike Agumawale, Jay. She's 33 points from being the all-time leading scorer right now at Notre Dame. Yeah, she passed Skylar Diggins. She's got over 2,300 points already, and you know, Oregon just beat Oregon State in Eugene and Sabrina Ionescu had 29 points and nine assists in that game and Oregon averaging 90 points a game that leads the country if you haven't seen Sabrina Ionescu play she is as good off pick and rolls as any player in the country male or female Hero turns the corner can't finish and a foul though is called against Tennessee it'll be on Schofield you know Dan Tennessee averages right at 20 assists per game. They're an excellent passing team. The Vols have five assists in this game. Yeah. They've been essentially reduced by the Kentucky defense into having to go one-on-one -on -one and to take on five defenders with one action. They've been taken totally out of their offense. They're not shooting the three well tonight, three for 13. They're being out-rebounded by nine. And Kentucky is shooting 62% in the game. 21 of 34. Yeah, five of eight in the second half. And it has been all Kentucky. And every, every, basically every player that's come in for, for Kentucky has made a positive contribution. Bone to Williams. Fade away over Travis. Tipped by Schofield. Man, oh, man. Well, he had to go up strong for that one. 
But how about the difficulty of that shot for Grant Williams having to shoot over the outstretched arm of P.J. Washington? He is so long. Ashton Hagens continues to be in complete control at the offensive end for Kentucky. Now up to seven assists with no turnovers in this game for the freshman. Well, Tennessee is not able to get much pressure on this Kentucky team. They haven't had to turn their backs at all. They're just sort of picking them apart and getting, basically getting whatever they want. Alexander back in for Schofield. Here comes Pons as well, as Bone will sit down. I mean, this should be a real confidence builder for Kentucky to let the players know that they've got this in them. I mean, they have not played this well that I've seen in any other game. They've had some good games, nothing like this. A lot of contact down low, and it'll be Alexander whistled for the foul. Wow. He was around in front. They got tied up. How is that his foul? That's interesting. And it's number four. And that's going to force Rick Barnes to his bench again as Fulkerson will come in. And Alexander had position in front. He was around in front. And he was dislodged from that position. But those are those are difficult plays to call with two big bodies banging. Yeah. How about bonus already, Jay? Barely five minutes into the second half. Well, the the fouls, the foul advantage usually goes to the aggressor, and it, you don't have to have watched this game very long to figure out who the aggressor has been. It's been Kentucky. You know, people sometimes look at they look at free throw disparity and foul disparity. You know, there's a there's usually there's a disparity for a reason. And Tennessee has not put Kentucky in a position to foul as often as Kentucky's done that to Tennessee. Remember the report Maria had early in the game when Rick Barnes told his team, you're settling for jump shots too often. Well, they haven't been able to penetrate this defense. Williams. You know what he did there? He paused for poor. <laughs> you like that, didn't you? <laughs> I do. You, you better patent that by the end of the night. Man, he is. Down well, that's not mine. That's, that's Kevin Eastman. Yeah. But, yeah, he's spent more time on his back than I have seen. Good shot fake to get P.J. Washington off the floor. Just a simple little pick and roll and a pocket pass from Lamonte Turner. But he is drawing quite a crowd, and it is an angry crowd and a physical one. That was not a subway push. No. <laughs> As some people know, Jay, you coached this young man in AAU a few years ago. There you are, back row, left head coach, your son Anthony on the team. Daniel Jones, Duke quarterback, played on that team, and Grant Williams. Yeah, it's a great group of guys. John Serby, former assistant to Jeff Lebo at, at Auburn. It was a lot of fun, and, and this Grant Williams was a, a terrific player in high school. Wasn't as heavily recruited as he should have been simply because his body wasn't there. He's a, a smaller post guy that didn't have the body he has now, as Maria Taylor told us about. But he's got unbelievable hands, and you're not going to find a, a better young man. Maria? And actually, Jay, it was assistant coach Desmond Oliver who spotted Grant Williams when he was in eighth grade playing at Providence Day in Charlotte, and he said when he got the job at Tennessee, he wanted to recruit him there and immediately brought him on. And another foul down in the post. Reed Travis is being so aggressive trying to establish position. And this time, it was Schofield who gets called for the foul, his third. Now watch, he goes right into the chest of Schofield and, and really backs him in. And I don't know what Schofield, now Schofield grabbed his arm, that's what Doug Sermon's called there. I don't know what he can do. I mean, he just got knocked backwards. But again, the aggressor is getting the call, and the aggressor has been Kentucky. Now watch. Reed Travis goes right into the chest of Schofield and just knocks him off, but just he had that arm on him, and that's what drew the call. I mean, if that's not, we've been talking about, you hear all these officials and supervisors talking about post play, and we've got to clean up the post. And, you know, if you've got that position, you're getting knocked off there. It's awfully difficult to play defense in the post. The lead is 20 for the Wildcats. Fulkerson can't handle the pass, runs it down, and finds Pons. Bowden off his screen. Rejected by Travis. Numbers for Kentucky. And 
and the follow by Montgomery. Five white shirts going after the ball. And Tennessee slow getting down the floor. It has been a consistent theme all game long. As soon as that shot was blocked, it was a run out. And watch how hard Kentucky runs. And then compare that. Now one ball was down, but compare it to, look, nothing but white shirts. And look at all the Tennessee guys kind of jogging down. Wow. I mean, they, they, right now, Tennessee's a beaten team. Kentucky, They're a beaten team. Kentucky out hustling and out efforting a team known for its hustle and effort and toughness tonight. But you're right, Kentucky came out from the opening moment. P.J. Washington kind of established the, the tone of this game in the first couple of minutes, and there's been no let-up. Now, I'm not sure that I'm a big believer in makeup calls, but we've had so little contact on this, but the foul disparity is being being evened out right now. Missed three by Bowden. Just stunning how one-sided this has been. Travis, a size advantage on Ponds. Tennessee's had to go small because of foul trouble, and Kentucky is owning the block. Got to go into Williams. Now, he was hooked by Ashton Hagens. Now, you wonder why that's not, you know, what's a hook and hold and what's not. That's another interesting part of this. You got to switch on the screen. And, like, how do you, what do you call that? Like, did they just get tangled up, or when, when are we calling the hook and hold and when not? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad they're not calling it, but you kind of wonder, like, what are we doing here? Schofield kept that pivot foot down, and another tip in, another athletic play on the offensive glass by Admiral Schofield. And did that with the left hand. But look how hard it is. Everything's contested. How hard it is for Tennessee just to get a score. I mean, Kentucky able to run their offense, make their cuts. They're, they're running their offense without breaking a sweat. And they've made it incredibly difficult for Tennessee to get anything. And Travis scores on the block. And that could have been an end one. They're just bigger, stronger and more resolute to get to the rim than Tennessee. Schofield misses the three. Rebound, Travis. Just complete domination, especially here in the second half. It was only a six-point game at halftime. It's 25-7 for Kentucky in the second half. Kentucky hasn't punched anybody like this all year long. This is the best they've played, and it's not close. This is, this is Final Four type stuff. Baker with a block. And everybody who's come into the game in a white jersey tonight has been a contributor. The only one that struggled a little bit is Emmanuel Quickly. Man, this has... You don't want to overstate things, but... You know, if Kentucky plays like this, this, this is a Minneapolis team. Go Big Blue, the chant here, and it's going to get a little bit louder. No, we had a travel called on Travis, so wave off the bucket. To could take called, us to they could have called a hook, too. Yep. Great noise and emotion and intensity here, but are up, and it's Kentucky in a one-sided affair. There is a big disparity on the scoreboard. And it has been because of the physical play of Kentucky. Grant Williams, the SEC Player of the Year, has been knocked all over the place. He has spent more time on the floor on his back than he has standing up in this game. And still he has 11 points and 7 rebounds. But he's only got 4 shot attempts in this game. Kentucky has made it so difficult for Williams to get the ball in a scoring area. And this team that averages 20 assists per game, Tennessee, has five assists on 16 field goals.
That's remarkable, the defensive job that Kentucky has done on this team that is averaging, what, 86 points per game. They've got 38. And not only are there about 23,000 people who are fans of Kentucky enjoying this, but some former Wildcats are here as well. This is NBA All-Star Weekend. Maria Taylor is with one of those former Cats. It is. It's All-Star Weekend, so there's a little bit of a break. So Kevin Knox decided to come and watch his Wildcats. And, you know, you're a first-round draft pick. You went to the New York Knicks. You've played in Rupp. Now you've played in MSG. I need you to compare the two atmospheres for me. I mean, both is crazy. I mean, Rupp is like this almost every single game. Madison Square Garden is the same. I mean, the fans uh, show so much support. Win or lose, they're going to be there for you. So that's probably why they've got some of the best fans in the world. And a big reason why players come to Kentucky is to become a pro. So tell me how Coach Cal being a Wildcat helped prepare you to be a first-rounder and play for the Knicks. Yeah, they're just going to get you outside your comfort zone. That's something that Cal preaches pretty much the whole year. He wants you to play under uh, great conditions. He wants to yell at you, scream at you, so you can be ready for the next level. So I think that's one of the reasons why. Okay, you look pretty ready when you uh, slammed it on Ben Simmons. I think that was two games ago. I just need you to, to take me back to that moment and what you remember. Yeah, I mean, I, I had to finish that dunk. I mean, uh, shout out DeAndre for the great pass. It was a great backdoor cut, and I just went up and finished it. All right, you guys did have a standing ovation here, and I know that you're a little bit of an NCAA junkie. So talk to me about whether or not this Kentucky team is a Final Four team. I think they are. I mean, I think when we play our best basketball, I mean, I think we could beat pretty much anybody in the country. Just got in the tournament, you got to be able to play at a consistent rate. Uh, it's one or go home, so you got to play every game like it's your last. And a guy that's been playing well the last eight games is P.J. Washington. You played with him. What have you enjoyed about his game lately? I mean, he's just taking leadership of this team. I mean, he's taking over and basically being the man of the team. So, I mean, he's got to keep playing like this. I mean, he's definitely got a shot at winning SEC Player of the Year. All right, I appreciate your time, Kevin. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Maria, thank you. You saw some of the former Wildcats who are here, among them Malik Monk, Michael Kidd-Gilchrist, Wenyan Gabriel, and others are here. Again, this is All-Star Weekend, so all the guys playing pro have a little bit of time off. How about the difference in halves? In the first half, you didn't have a team in the one-and-one one until the last minute of the first half. Now you're in the one-and-one one halfway through the second half. Both teams, different whistle in the second half than these teams got in the first. Last five points belong to Tennessee, but they're still down by a whopping 19-point margin right now. So it's tipped out of bounds with eight on the shot clock. A little 2-3 zone now for Tennessee. Just try to give a little bit of a different look to Kentucky. They haven't been able to keep the Wildcats out of the lane, off the glass. Nothing. Terrific pass. Tough shot for a hero. And Schofield the rebound for the Vols. Open is Williams and fouled on a three-point attempt by Nick Richards and another hard collision with the court for Grant Williams who's been knocked on his rear end all night long. Well not a smart play by Nick Richards trying to close out to the three-point shooter and it was long after it was released but he's still going to get three free throws. I mean he didn't get hit till after he'd landed but it's not a good foul. I'll take Grant Williams. He's going to need a cut man, like a corner man to take care of him. I, don't, I can't recall a game in which a, a big-time player has been knocked around like he's been knocked around. And we are told the officials are looking at the monitor to see if it was a two or a three, and clearly you can see it's a three. So three free throws coming here for Williams. Fourth foul as well on Nick Richards. It's funny though, he wasn't fouled until he came down inside the line. Right. Isn't so that, isn't that weird? Landed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he wasn't touched right. until he came down. Like that's just a, a really odd play. I'm not sure I've seen a three point shooter fouled so long after he landed. Because the shooter has to be given the right to land. Mm -hmm. But as, as you well, he say, did have the right to land. Right. As you say, he was down already. You're just saying, did, you know, you're just kind of saying, well, wait a minute, how long do you yeah. get before you're no longer the yeah. shooter? It's just, it was odd. I, I'm not questioning the call. It's just uh, you don't see that very often that particular way. And again, they've got a long way to go, but they're starting to make some inroads here. Williams makes this an 8-0 run for Tennessee. Now this is about stringing together consecutive stops. And playing without fouling. Good ball movement. Open shot from the corner. Johnson the miss. Tipped back out by Travis. But he knocks it right out of bounds. Right now for Tennessee. 
You want to not only get a good shot, but put Kentucky in a position to foul you. Now the crowd rallying, trying to help Kentucky at the defensive end. Williams a touch on the block, Travis there. Washington over to help. Schofield from the corner, good ball movement. That is more like the Tennessee we have seen all season. Well, that's the passing we've seen. You know, Grant Williams able to, the diagonal pass to Jordan Bone and the immediate pass to the corner. That's the kind of ball movement that you normally see from Tennessee, but it's all because Grant Williams was able to catch the ball. Watch how he looks middle to see if there's a double coming. And as soon as he attacks, you got Kyle Alexander down low in the read spot. Keldon Johnson has to go get him. Then he's slow getting out to Admiral Schofield because of the great pass from Jordan Bone. And all of a sudden, there's some life from Tennessee. Big Monday, we've got a great rivalry game for you. Virginia is in Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. Mr. Billis will be there. Part of the Rivalry Week Big Monday matchup, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Virginia with a six-point win over Notre Dame. Big games today for Hunter and Guy. Duke a game up on Virginia and Carolina. And, of course, Virginia, Virginia Tech Monday. Duke and Carolina meet in Durham on Wednesday. And Duke with the obviously 11 and 1 with the lead in the ACC. And you're just looking at the schedule saying, where, where might losses come? And there aren't that many. One, one could be Wednesday night against North Carolina. The 2 3 zone for Tennessee. Kentucky can't just pass the ball around the perimeter. They've got to penetrate the gaps of this zone, whether by the pass or the dribble. Interesting, Hagens was at the foul line. Now he steps out. Johnson throws up a runner, and Williams has it. Poor possession by Kentucky. Wasted too much time on the perimeter without attacking. Bone. And the wrestling match between Alexander and Travis, and the possession arrow will give it to Tennessee. Boy, Reed Travis just threw Alexander out of bounds. I think there's a little bit of a bulk difference in those two. Watch this. They both have the ball, and he just let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Travis is three inches shorter and 25 pounds heavier than Kyle Alexander. Got to get it in. Hagan's just face guarding Jordan Bone. Schofield again from distance and another foul on a three-point attempt. Boy, that was not a smart play. And right now, Kentucky, the zone has been a big factor in changing the, the tempo of this game. But Kentucky making mental errors right here. You're not trying to block that shot. You're trying to pressure the shot. There's a difference. Trying to block it led to the foul. Boy, there's a lot of time left in yep. regulation of this game. If Tennessee can get this down under 10, put a little game pressure on Kentucky, we could have a game again. And this should not have been a game again. Bound in the back end for Tennessee. Quickly in for Johnson for Kentucky. For the move to the zone has been helpful in this game to make Kentucky stand around a little bit. They are not attacking like they were earlier in the game. Schofield a breather after he makes two or three. Ponds back in. It's now a 13 to nothing run for the Vols. Right now, Tyler Hero has got to be active. Little one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Hero has to move and find a find an open spot. Hero two for seven, seven points on the night. Washington gets a touch near the elbow, drives it in and scores. A good movement by Hero to get open and then to get the ball to Washington, who was active in the middle of that zone. They stretched it out a little bit with their movement and caused the zone to move. Tough pass taken away by Washington. Two on one. Hero. And Alexander hustles back, but is called for the foul. Is that it for him? 
If it is Alexander, it is number five, and he knows it. He's walking off, done for the night. Well, one of the few times you've seen Grant Williams throw the ball away by just trying to thread a needle through traffic. There was really nothing there when he was in the corner. You know, Eve Pons made a cut to the basket, but there are just too many people there. Rick Barnes telling him right now, you can't make that pass. I mean, it led to a run out and took away some of the momentum that had been established by the balls. And Williams will sit down. Next whistle under the eight minute mark is immediate timeout, so they can get him a pretty good rest without missing much game time. DJ Washington, as you see, just tucks that elbow in right before he goes up, gets down, takes his last dribble, and watch his right arm. He tucks that elbow in so he can keep the elbow under the ball. Kentucky, one of the youngest teams in the country. Tennessee, one of the oldest teams in the country. But the young team has played with great poise, togetherness, and toughness all night long. They finally have snapped that long run that Kentucky had. They've gotten the last four points and have that lead back up to 15. Tennessee could use Jordan Bowden getting a little bit hot here. And how about Bowden and Turner, Jay, are a combined one for 12, two points. Well, they've been well guarded. A couple of double-figure scores on the season. Schofield, the drive, good help by Travis. He's had a big night. The numbers may not show it that much, but he's been a part of everything. Just driving into trouble. First, it was Admiral Schofield driving into trouble. And then I'll see your drive into trouble and I'll <laughs> raise you. <laughs> when you don't make the defense move and then you drive it, you are just asking for it. About it. And it goes. Maybe that'll get him going That's a little bit because he can't go over and have Tennessee win on the road. It's not going to happen. His first points of the night, still a 13-point deficit. Hero still going, left the floater short, got it back, and missed again, got it back again, and hits. Tennessee had every opportunity to grab a defensive rebound. But Tyler Hero, the three-point shooter, a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Aerial coverage is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Well, life has certainly been going right for the Gonzaga Bulldogs this year. One of the top teams in the country. A projected number one seed right now, Rui Hachimura. One of the best players in the country. Will lead Gonzaga against San Diego. Dave Pash, Bill Walton, standing by to bring you that game at the conclusion of ours tonight. Rui Hachimura is such a difficult matchup. And big, strong, and really, really skilled. But talk about big and strong. Kentucky has dominated the paint in this game. 32 to 18 points in the paint. The Wildcats have blocked six shots. They have changed far more. And P.J. Washington has been outstanding. 20 points, eight of nine from the field, two blocks, two steals. Tennessee ball, 6.43 to go. P.J. Washington getting a little work done on his left leg right now. You have to, you have to credit his great play in this game to the 94 feet segment. <laughs> well, of course, you have to. That would be an interesting study. We should do a, a bit of an analytics study on how guys do after 94 feet. They do great. <laughs> and even if they don't, they're just better for the experience. Rick Barnes keeps subbing people in and out, trying to find a combination, and 
They had that run a few minutes ago, got it down to 11. That was as close as they've been since Kentucky bolted out of the, the gate here in the second half with a 14 to nothing run. Back to the 2 3 zone. And Tyler Hero is the perimeter threat. Manuel quickly is a good shooter. He's turned the ball over a couple times in this one, but that's the guy right there. And Hero has it stripped away after a nice feed from Travis. Turner for three. Every open shot, it seems, that Tennessee's had, they've missed. They are just 5 of 18 from three-point range. On the season, 37%. Tonight, 28%. Turnaround, a little bit short for Washington, or for Travis, rather. Nice cut, nice feed, but Bowden can't finish. He is fouled, though, by Quickly. Little stagger screen on the weak side, and they just cut it short. Bowden curling right around the first of the two screeners, and just got passed quickly, and not enough pressure on the ball to discourage that pass from Admiral Schofield. Sports Center tonight after Gonzaga San Diego with John Abutragras and John Anderson. If you didn't know, Jay, you're on the show tonight as you will break down this game between Tennessee and Kentucky. Must see endings across the country. Crazy stuff, including another thrilling win for Iowa and the best of NBA All Star Saturday. You know what it means when you're first up on the rundown for Sports Center, don't you? It's your big deal. It means ratings bonanza. <laughs> Tennessee still in the 2-3 zone. Kentucky turns it over. Well, John Calipari very unhappy with the sloppy play against the zone. And right now, against the zone, Kentucky's not penetrated any gaps to make two play one and then play out of that. It's been a lot of windshield wiper passing around the outside of the zone. This is just the third game against a ranked opponent this season for Tennessee. Kind of hard to believe. They beat Gonzaga when the Zags were number one. They lost in overtime to Kansas when the Jayhawks were number two. Both of those before the new year back in non-conference play. Now you look at the rest of the schedule for Tennessee. They've still got to go to LSU. They've still got to go to Ole Miss. They've still got to go to Auburn. And they're also going to host Kentucky at their place. Yeah, it's not going to be easy for any of the top teams with the way these Power Five conferences are backloaded. But that is not an easy finish. LSU has really played well. Obviously played well in this building on Tuesday night, but they are so athletic and talented. Vermont Waters, their best player, best scorer, but Naz Reed, an excellent player. I mean, they're Skylar Mays, they're very, very good. And if Kentucky wins this game, it really tightens things up amongst those top three at the top of the standings in the SEC. What great work by Washington. P.J. Washington has been in attack mode. Caught it, drove it, and he was first after that offensive rebound. Look at the reaction. Grabbing it with that left hand and then finishing the play. Now that's how you penetrate the gaps of the zone. He just blew by the top two defenders in that 2-3 zone and was quickest off the floor for that second opportunity. What a game P.J. Washington has had and what a what a last eight games he has had. And Admiral Schofield becomes the second of all to foul out tonight for Washington the seventh time in the last eight games to Jay's point that he has had 20 or more points. Well, Tennessee's got time for one last push. You just don't know if they've got enough energy to make that push. And would have to do it without Schofield. Good hands by Hagens. Boy, Kentucky's been spectacular. The defense has been excellent. It's been strong. They've been talking. 
I bet you there are a lot of fans in this building who have leaned over to the person next to them and said, wouldn't have thought this was coming after the loss to Duke at the beginning of the year. I mean, that 34-point blowout, and they've gotten better and better and better over the last couple of months. That yeah, took a step back with the loss to LSU. But what a performance by the Wildcats tonight. Up 13 on the number one team of the nation. Less than four minutes to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by H&R Block. In person or online, Block has your back. And in part by Smile Direct Club, delivering straighter smiles for 60% less. Assuming that Tennessee does not make a comeback right now. Well, Joe Lenardi is, he's in the bracket bumper. It is that time of year. He's got Duke, Tennessee, Virginia, Gonzaga as the ones. He said earlier today, even if Kentucky wins this game, the ones don't change. The order would change a little bit. But regardless of ones and twos and record, it's Duke and Carolina. It's going to be terrific. It's going to be must-see TV Wednesday night from Durham. Now Ashton Hagens, in his last four games, has 18 assists and 12 turnovers coming into this one. In this game, seven assists, just a single turnover in 33 minutes. He's played excellent defense. This is the Ashton Hagens that John Calipari needs on the floor every game for Kentucky to contend for the whole thing. And a big ovation for the freshman as he sits down. A well-deserved ovation. Another deflection and another turnover. Little screen, rescreen action for Jordan Bowden. Then he drove it. But Kentucky just rallying to the ball. Just so active. Active hands getting deflections. Good passes. Johnson baseline, yes. Oh, that's, that's a great zone attack. Getting the ball inside, back out and then reversed and attacking off the reversal. Fulkerson takes a bump and banks it home for Tennessee. Timeout Rick Barnes. Fulkerson just getting back to that right shoulder. He's a lefty and spun back to get to that left hand off the glass. Well, the game began with P.J. Washington taking over for Kentucky, and he has continued to have a great night. Nine for 11, 23 points. Well, P.J. Washington is talented, he's long, and he's very skilled. And a good passer that early on in the season was very up and down. He might have 29 points and 12 rebounds in one game against Seton Hall, but then other games, he'd score six and wouldn't be calling for the ball, wouldn't be active. But he flipped some sort of switch eight games ago, and he has been as consistent at the highest level as any big guy in the country over the last few weeks. Really been a remarkable transformation for P.J. Washington into what could be to what is every game, and you can rely upon it. It's like, Dave, if that is your name, you're stuck with me, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. I love my drums. <laughs> Get a chance to see Rui Hachimura, Brandon Clark. How good is Brandon They're Clark? Terrific. Uh, Wooden Award, late season 20, as is Hachimura. Don't forget about the Zags when you're talking about the best teams in the country. Back to man-to-man -to -man for Tennessee. Go down for Washington. Less than 2.30 to go. Tennessee ball. Grant Williams got a piece of that ball before it went up, but still, P.J. Washington's strong enough to get the shot off. Boy, Fulkerson was begging for the ball, didn't get it. Now he has to come out to get it. Looking in for Williams, being fronted, can't get it in there. Turner misses the three. And Washington, another rebound. But really, Kentucky just needs to use clock here. Didn't get it across in 10 seconds, yeah. so it's a turnover. Well, 
think the uh, Kentucky players took them a little while to realize what had gone on there, but it is a, a 10 second violation, so it'll go back over to the Volunteers. Well, the clock starts as soon as Kentucky gets possession. And it took them a while to sort of, for P.J. Washington to get rid of the ball. He just didn't realize it. Boy, Williams has had to work so hard for every touch tonight. A nice kick out to Bone, who knocks down a three. And Rick Barnes. Looks like he was going to use a timeout. He does not. 12-point lead, Kentucky ball. And Johnson to inbound for the Cats. Tennessee stepping up the pressure, but time is their enemy right now. Time and those five guys in white shirts. Yeah, they've been a problem, too. Boy, Higgins has just played so well. He's been in command of the team. Remember, John Calipari said a couple of days ago that he has, quote, hit the freshman wall, that he hasn't been very good the last three games. He'll have uh, much higher praise, I would think, for his freshman after this one. Well, he knocked the wall down in this game because he's played strong all game long. Well, it's not like he's playing against a slouch. Jordan Bone is the best point guard in this league. If Kentucky wins tonight, it sure looks like they're going to. It'll be the second win for Kentucky against a number one under John Calipari. The first game of the tournament against Ohio State back in 2000. And 11, and they would avoid consecutive home losses. They haven't had that in 10 years, going back to the year before Calipari was the coach. No basket. E.J. Montgomery was called for a foul that kind of cleared some space for Hagens. The crowd started chanting overrated, and uh, John Calipari tried to put a stop to that. I never know why crowds want to do that. They want to take away from their own win by saying it wasn't that great. Right. <laughs> where, where, where was the foul there? Yeah, Cal didn't like the overrated chant. I mean, they're the number one team, why, and you're playing great. Why would you want to call them overrated? Like, well, what we're doing isn't that great. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that foul call. That was not a foul, and it was away from the play. I thought that didn't make any sense at all. Yeah, and Montgomery agreed with you. You could tell from his facial expression. Fulkerson will go to the line for Tennessee. I mean, we, the first half was like a football game we had no whistles and the second half's been like more like a dance and we've had whistles like crazy Schofield fouled out a while ago Alexander fouled out even earlier Hans back in for Fulkerson. Right now for Kentucky, it's about making hard cuts, passing and catching and being strong with the ball and then knocking down free throws because you're going to get fouled. Williams fouls Travis. Tennessee came into the game averaging better than 85 points per game, seventh in the country, and shooting 52% second in the country. And they're a long way off from those numbers tonight. Yeah, you didn't expect that Tennessee was going to come into this building and get into the 80s. I mean, you didn't think Kentucky would allow that. But the, the manner in which this game has been, this lead has been built up, I mean, it's been a physical fist fight. And it's been taken straight to Tennessee by Kentucky from the opening tap. I mean, they just manhandled the Vols in the first half. And still, it was a, a six-point game at halftime. But the start of the second half, I mean, they just ran away. 14-0 yep. run in about the first three and a half minutes of the second half blew it open. And the closest Tennessee got after that was 11. <laughs> Hagan's a good job to stay in front of Bone, but Bone's, it's a tough turnaround. Got to make some free throws here and there, and this one will be over. Gonzaga San Diego currently airing on ESPN News. That game will move over here to ESPN as soon as this one is done. It's not often you get a shot at number one. It's not often you beat number one. But Kentucky, which has been getting better and better, they're ranked fifth already. They're 
projected to be a two seed at this time. But again, as you mentioned, the backloaded nature of the schedule for some in these some of these power conferences, you've got a chance to to move up a little bit with the kind of schedule that Kentucky still got coming. P.J. Washington looks like he's in a little bit of pain over there. I wonder if it's some sort of cramp. He's drinking some Gatorade. You see him right behind, right there. He was getting getting that left leg massaged a little bit. Blood on the court. I'm surprised it's just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tyler Hero did a good job in this game on the defensive end. 12 rebounds for Tyler Hero as a guard. He sticks his nose in there and goes after the ball. He averages over four rebounds a game. First double double for the freshman. Saw him earlier this year at Louisville at 24 points in that game. That was really his breakout performance and did that as much on the defensive end as anywhere. Turner forces up a three and Travis right in the middle of it underneath again with his eighth rebound of the night. Well, it hasn't been Tennessee's night, but that's where a shot fake would have gone a long way. Let the defender fly by. Interesting week for the Wildcats. The controversial loss at home here Tuesday night to LSU. What a year uh, Will Wade's team is having right now. And then Kentucky bouncing back with this extremely impressive performance against Tennessee. And look at what it all means at the top of the standings. If Kentucky wins, they'll go to 10 and 2. Tennessee would drop to 11 and 1. And Jay, you'd have three teams within one game of the lead in this conference. Yeah, really one of the big winners in this game has been LSU because the, the Tigers' schedule down the stretch is nowhere near as difficult as Kentucky's or Tennessee's. And there's Jordan Bone knocking down another shot. Man, that guy is a good player. He's the, he's the best pro prospect on this Tennessee team. One game to keep an eye on. Tennessee will be at LSU uh, one week from today, February 23rd on ESPN at noon Eastern. It's not going to get much easier for Rick Barnes' team. A tough schedule the rest of the way. And Tyler Hero back to the line. One thing you know, though, it may not get easier, but it's not going to get more physical. Mm -hmm. A league right now with Joey Brackett's projecting seven teams getting in, and he had Florida as one of the first four out. You want to talk about a team that helped themselves today, the Gators with an 18-point road win at Alabama today. Big win for them. And one by one, the Cats coming out to big ovations. This time it's Travis. Travis was excellent in the second half. Bowden short on the three. And Hero another loose ball. Ba Bone fouls him. And Hero will head back to the free throw line. And surprise, surprise, more bodies on the deck. There have been more bodies on the ground in this game than in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and, and granted, this is late in the game. This is not the way it has been for most of the night. But look at the players in the game right now for Kentucky. Five freshmen. And they've all grown up a little bit here tonight. They have all played well. Quickly not getting as much of an opportunity. Everybody else uh, really has done yeoman's work for the Cats tonight. And the younger team taking out the older, more experienced team. Mm -hmm. And stronger, now playing at home, but stronger from the opening tap. And that, that was the most impressive thing to me, was just how, how strong physically and mentally that Kentucky has been throughout this 40 minutes. They had one lull when Tennessee made a little comeback, had a chance to cut it to below 10. But it's been all Kentucky in this thing. All Kentucky. Quickly with a good hustle, knocks the ball away into the hands of Johnson. And Montgomery will get a freebie. <laughs> the 
Big Blue Nation going to have themselves a fun Saturday night. Well, they've earned it. This is the best Kentucky's played all season long. The best they have played. Tennessee will suffer its first loss in a conference, just its second loss of the season. This will snap the Volunteers' 19-game winning streak, the longest in program history. What a performance by the Kentucky Wildcats here tonight, taking out number one. And doing it in convincing fashion. The final score, Kentucky 86, Tennessee 69. For Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, and our crew, I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. From Lexington, more hoops coming your way to San Diego with Bill Walton. Here's Dave Pash. I didn't get ice cream. <laughs>